Halloween. Halloween. It is finally that time of the year. I'm going to start off tame, okay? Tame. And uh, just do a little, like, home decor. A little home decor. We're going to start the spooky season by making a barbed wire inspired pillow. It's actually not called the barb, it's called the barb. It's by Shai Talaga. It is an Australian brand. They have it in three sizes. It's called the Shai Mini Barb, the Shai Petite Barb, and the Classic Barb. I will be aiming for the middle barb, but honestly, it's gonna depend on uh, the amount of fabric I have. Cause I'm pretty sure I don't have anything chrome, but I know that I have sparkly fabric, so we'll see. I'm just gonna pull up their description. Inspired by the space between functional object and sculpture, each spiky soft creation is handmade to order. Mm. Cut, sewn, and filled by hand using the highest quality locally sourced materials. We are sisters, not twins. Our baby barbs are all unique. We are made with love and made to last. We are spiky, soft, sculptures only, gentle hugs for me, please. Now I saw um, like a TikTok of, I think the designer that was making them and she did describe them more to be like sculptural art, like sculptural and functional. So if you're looking at this mean like, girl, that's not soft. That's not gonna be comfortable to lie on. I don't think the goal was for it to be like a revolutionary comfy pillow. It's for it to like look aesthetically pleasing and you can actually use, you can actually lean on and not be like rock solid. I don't actually know because I don't know this person, but that's just what I'm getting from this very minimal research that I've been doing. So they range from about 160 some dollars to like a hundred, 200 and, 70 some dollars we're gonna as per usual make it for zero dollars zero dollars and when i say zero dollars i mean it i didn't buy anything for this like no extra buy save or nothing because i know that one time <laughs> i do want to put it out there though that i am just trying my best to recreate the item so what i make is not a reflection at all of their product because it's gonna be nowhere near the same let's be for real i'm gonna try my best to make it as close to the original but Again, I am no wizard, okay? My eyeballing skills only go so far. I'm gonna work with, you know, the dimensions that they give me here and try my best to kind of emulate that, but it, it's not gonna be the same. So don't be in the comments telling me it's not accurate enough because I know, I know it's not. I'm just oh here trying my best, okay? Let's get started. <laughs> here are the fabrics I pulled for this project. This lavender satin-like one was the closest thing I could find in my stash that looked like the fabric in the original pillows. But then I saw these that I completely forgot that I had that look way more Halloween-y. I think it'll give the pillows a little more edge, which is a vibe I'm going for because, you know, barbed wire is pointy. Anyways, since I'm still in my Barbie era, I'ma go with the pink. Let's open this baby up and lay it flat. If you're wondering where I got this fabric, I can't help you. <laughs> I got these years ago in Hong Kong and I kid you not, they've been sitting in my stash for at least 10 years, at least. But hey, can you blame me? The fabric is too damn pretty. I feel like I'm wasting it if I use it. But then again, it's more of a waste just sitting on my shelf, so we're putting it to use. Also, I'll be going back in a couple months and I just know I'll be buying more fabric, so I'm desperately trying to clear up some space in my fabric stash to make room for more. Looking at the original pillow here, we see there are two, I don't know, pipes or tubes? We'll call them pipes, <laughs> sandwiched in the middle. Then two longer pipes that wrap around it. I have no idea how long the long pipe should be, so we're gonna start with the shorter innards first. So we're gonna mark and cut out two eight inch by 22 inch rectangles. And yes, I wasn't thinking here as I ended up cutting out four. We only need two though, so just cut out two. Put the rest of the fabric aside as we'll need that later for the longer pipes. Now let's take one of these rectangles and fold it in half. For the stitch line, we basically are going to draw out a parallelogram. First up, gonna mark that half inch seam allowance straight at the opening, then measure out each side like so to get that perfect diagonal line on both sides. To achieve this stylistic tip here, we're gonna draw a concave curve. 
I measured in about half an inch as reference, then freehand drew a curve so it looks like this. Do the same thing to the other side, then straight stitch it down, leaving an opening in the middle so we can bag it out later. Since we'll be stuffing these pipes to the max, I'm going to reinforce my corners by stitching little secondary lines here and here. This will allow us to take the pressure off the main corners while keeping the shape sharp. Does that even make sense? It better, because I don't even know how else to explain that. Anyways, let's slim down our seam allowance with some pinking shears, then voila, it's time to bag it out. As per usual, turn it inside out, then use a safety pin at the seams to get a more precise look and sharper corners. There are a ton of tools you can buy to help you with this, but trust me when I say a safety pin is all you really need. Once that's done, give it a nice press, then on to the stuffing. My mom recently got rid of an old beyond repair couch we had sitting in the basement. Of course, in perfect mom fashion, she removed a bunch of things from it she thought would come in handy later on in life. One of those things being stuffing. Bless her for thinking ahead because now I have three bags of this. Three bags. That is a cheapskate crafter's dream right there. Anyways, let's stuff these up, then proceed to do a completely useless step, adding wire. I don't know why, but my one brain cell told me the twisting of the pipes can only be achieved by adding wire to the inside. Otherwise, it would fall apart. Little did I know this would be the dumbest waste of time, so I'm not gonna even try to explain what I was doing here. Let's just skip ahead. Usually on a project like this, you wanna use coban thread to prevent um, ripping because of the tension that's on the seam, but I don't have that, so I'm going to use just regular, literally no name. It, there's, there's no name brand yarn here. I mean, sorry, thread. I'm gonna double it so it's stronger in strength. So usually you take an arm's length of thread, but because I'm gonna double it, I'm going to do a whole person length of thread. <laughs> Just like that. Tie the ends off together, then whip stitch the seam shut. And yes, because I have long nails, I cut a slit at the top of my rubber thimbles so it can fit properly. Don't listen to anyone that says you can't craft with long nails because they are lying to you. You can literally do anything, you just gotta learn to adapt. So this is what we're working with. It's kind of small. What I should have done actually is made just the middle part 22, like measured out. This is smaller than 22. Yeah, 22 is like over here. So because I didn't take into account the seam allowance, like take it, it would be smaller. And the 22 inches should have been for this section. And then this added section should be even longer. <sighs> like the length of it isn't bad. It's still a cute size. It's just the thickness, it's too thick. Right, it's, it's way too big for the proportions, for the length, it just doesn't really make sense. This is what I was gonna make the middle section with, like to wrap it around. But as you can see here, that's just too short, right? The original I think wraps around twice. So I'm gonna make two more of these, but double the length. So they're like that. So we can use it to wrap around this. Blah, 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 blah. Right, right? You, can, you can't answer me. I'm right, I hope I'm right. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. As I get these pieces done, I wanted to take the time to ask y'all for some suggestions. If there is a Halloween costume you'd like me to build or some DIY spooky home decor, let a girl know. Ideally, I'd like to finish recording all the Halloween content in the next two weeks so I can get it all edited and posted on time for you guys. Your girl is trying to stay consistent, okay? Anyways, let's jump right back into it. We're back. Am I in the center? I made the two extra pieces. This is oddly addicting to do. So in these smaller ones, the wire goes from about here to here, right? But on these big ones, I made them go from here to here because we're gonna be twisting them. Whereas this one, we're just gonna be like folding them a little. Yeah, hold on, let me pull up a reference photo so. I'm not trying to do this by memory. What happens in the photo is that these two are like twisted together, but I don't know how to keep it twisted. 
Like, how do we do that? We're not gonna. So we're just gonna do this because I don't know how to make it stay twisted. This is harder than it looks. <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, that doesn't look bad. It doesn't look good, but it doesn't look bad. <sighs> then this will go the other direction. What the heck? That can't be right. Oh, this needs to come even further. There's no way they made it like this, right? This seems really inefficient. This can't be right. Damn, I think it is. I definitely got the shape right, but I have no idea how to make it stay in this position. Let me just show you from above where it's at. Ooh. So this is the shape. I think I pretty much nailed it. I just don't know how to make it stay. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? You see, if I let go. Yeah. So basically what I need to do is attach each piece together one by one, section by section, like tack every point of contact for it to stay in place. If that doesn't work, I am going to glue it together. <laughs> I'm gonna use a glue gun, okay? It's just, I don't have Coban thread. Like I don't think my thread is strong enough to hold it all together. So I'm probably, probably going to glue it. I'm gonna be honest. Why did I put wire in there? You really don't need wire. <laughs> For some reason, I thought that that was gonna help it stay in place without thinking about how weak the wire is, that it definitely won't hold this like super tough tube in place. Like, hello. It just doesn't wanna stay curved. <sighs> well, I'm gonna take a little break and do that off camera. Let's just jump into the reveal montage in three, two, Have it, the cutest pillow I've ever made. It's definitely not the same as the original, but I gotta say it's pretty damn close. Dare I say I like mine better? That being said, I give this a rating of nine out of 10. The only thing I don't like about this is the fabric choice. For some reason, out of the three colors I have, this pink one is melting? I don't know why, but everything it touches turns into this weird bluish black. Like the black dye be transferring? I've rinsed it, wiped it down with Lysol, rinsed it again, but nope, still a staining machine. So unfortunately, this pillow has been shunned to the basement, but for the brief time I had it displayed in my room, I did enjoy the look of it very, very much. It's the perfect craft to kick off the Halloween autumn season with. That's all I got for you this week. This definitely wasn't the most accurate recreation I've ever made, but definitely the cutest. Okay, let me know if you'd like to see me make this again because I do want to make a bigger one. Like not bigger in terms of like the size of the wire, but more like length. Like imagine taking over a couch. Like the pillow that I made times three and attached. You know what I mean? Do you see the vision? <laughs> I don't know, I think it'd be cool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes, I'm looking at you, subscribe. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. I'll be posting every single week for a spooky season. So be ready, okay? Stay seated, all right? So yeah, bye!